the truth is it's not that much different than being a lawyer, except that you are um, now deciding the case instead of advocating on a case. You know, lawyers who come to court, many of them would have the skills to make a, a good judge and, and they maybe just don't think of themselves in that role. Let's have a conversation about stories. There is power in your story, power that can positively impact another person in ways you may never know. At Inspired Woman, the stories people share help change lives every day. I'm Marcy Narum, and this is Inspired Woman Conversations. Good afternoon, welcome to this episode, and I'm thrilled to have Lisa Fair McEvers, uh, a justice on the North Dakota Supreme Court, be my guest today. Welcome to Inspired Woman. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be with you. So I'd like to start out with asking guests, um, inspire means to excite, encourage, to breathe life into, and wonder about a time that you can uh, recall in your life that that happened for you and, and what did you do? How did you act on that inspiration? Well, um, the inspiration that I recall right off the top of my head was the inspiration for me to even seek to be a justice on the North Dakota Supreme Court. Uh, it was not something that I had anticipated would be part of my career to even seek to be a justice. And uh, so what breathed life into my uh, aspiration, so to speak, to become a justice on the Supreme Court was a call from another woman um, who thought that I might make a good candidate for the Supreme Court. And despite the fact that uh, I really didn't think I wanted to do that, uh, she asked me to think about it. And then I looked inward and looked outward and decided give it a shot and see what would happen, not even anticipating or expecting that I would be the one who was chosen when the appointment came up. So sometimes I think it, it takes encouragement from someone else to see something in ourselves. And, and so that phone call inspired me to think beyond what I was doing at the time, which was being a district judge, a trial judge, which was what I thought I always wanted to do. So <laughs> sometimes inspiration comes from others to look beyond what you're doing. Was this uh, in a professional capacity? Was it a friend, a, a mentor? Uh, it, was, it was someone who I would say was a mentor. I, I don't want to identify who it was, but it was someone who was very influential uh, to me and um, and made a difference because like I said, I had not, um, I was not intending to apply for that position. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us about who you are and are you a North Dakota girl and, and what was your, your dream when you were growing yeah, up? Yeah, so I, I grew up in North Dakota. Uh, my family is four generations deep here in North Dakota. Grew up in a small town. Minto, North Dakota, north of Grand Forks, about 30 miles. So I'm a class B kid. And when I grew up, I thought I was going to be a school teacher and probably coach basketball and volleyball and maybe softball track. I, I liked athletics. And so that's what I thought I was going to be when I grew up. And my um, life path took a different turn. And I ended up getting a business degree instead of a teaching degree. And um, then I ended up working for a a judge up in Grafton, North Dakota, a, a, a trial judge up there. And so I watched court and thought that was interesting. And when he retired, that's when I decided to go to law school. So I went to law school a little bit later in life in my early to mid thirties. So it wasn't what I intended to be at first, but that's how the path took me. And so where have you served? Well, um, so where I've served since I've, I graduated from law school in 1997. And after law school, I went and I was chosen to be a law clerk at the North Dakota Supreme Court. So it was someplace that I had been before. Um, after that, I went to private practice and worked in private practice for a few years. But I, I uh, could see that I wasn't getting in the courtroom as much as I wanted to in that particular practice. And so uh, I left that and became an assistant state's attorney in Cass County. And... Um, worked there for a few years, and then I served as North Dakota Labor Commissioner for five years, I think, uh, 2005 to 2010. 
And then in 2010, I was appointed district judge. And then in 2014, I was appointed to the Supreme Court. So I've been on the bench about 10 years, but at the Supreme Court, um, in, I'm in my seventh year. So. You mentioned that you weren't getting to um, be in the court as much. And what kind of law were you hoping to practice? Um, well, when I went to law school, I didn't really have a, a career path that I wanted. I didn't necessarily ne want to be a prosecutor, but I knew I wanted to do something in the courtroom. And frankly, I did aspire to be a judge. I know that that sounds a little arrogant, but you can still have a dream even though you don't know whether or not you're going to attain it. But I, I wanted to do some type of litigation, and the practice that I was in was primarily doing business and and uh, tax transactional type work. And so I wasn't getting the opportunities that I wanted uh, to be in the courtroom. So I took a step sideways and did something else. So I loved being a prosecutor. It was really fun while I did it. Mm -hmm. So the law day is coming up. I want to get, get back to a little bit more about um, what it is that you do, but with law day coming up, what is that all about? And uh, I guess, what do you do to recognize it? Well, Law Day is really an opportunity for the courts and the legal profession to tell others about the work we do and the importance of our legal system and our court system. And often what, what we do, the State Bar Association and our local bar associations try to organize events, mostly for school students. Like, like in Bismarck, for example, they hold mock trials and, and lawyers and judges go and visit kids at the school and talk about law day and they have different themes sometimes it's about different things in the constitution this year the topic was going to be about the 19th amendment which was is about women's right to vote it's a hundred year anniversary and so the the purpose of it is just to um, educate the public about the legal profession in our in our court system do you watch any uh, television shows that are in the courtroom, courtroom settings? I, I really try not to because I find them um, um, so unrealistic that I'm frustrated by watching them. And I know that might sound silly, but I think when you work in a profession and you don't see uh, your profession portrayed as you see it, it's hard to watch. And sometimes um, the shows are unrealistic and often don't portray lawyers or judges in the very best light. So I tend to avoid them, to be honest. With you. Okay, that's fair. I, uh, what came to mind is the show, I believe it's on CBS, All Rise. And it's a, a district judge, I, I believe. Yeah, I, I, I watched it a few times. She's a Superior Court judge in California. Yeah. I think that's where it's at. And I watched it a few times. And again, um, there are so many things. That, it's, it's very inspirational, perhaps, because I think she's trying to portray someone who's trying to make a difference. But the way that they show it isn't how it happens in real life. What, for example? Well, like I said, I only watched a few episodes, but I re recall one episode where um, after a hearing, the, uh, I believe it was the prosecutor, went into her office and they were having a conversation about a case that had just happened. And that would be a huge ethical viol violation for both the lawyer and the judge to be having that kind of a conversation in her office without the other attorney being there. And so, you know, these, these kinds of things, uh, if they do happen, they shouldn't be happening. And it just portrayed that as a normal circumstance that lawyers and judges would just be talking about a case without everybody being there. And that, that does not happen in my experience. Gotcha. Yes. Well, you know, we, when we watch these shows and we think, oh, when we wonder, is this really what it's like? And um, unless we talk to somebody like you, who knows, we might or have the experience ourselves, and many of us haven't, um, we don't know what, what it's like um, on either side of the bench. Well, just typically, if you think about it, they, they walk into a courtroom and a case is solved from beginning to end in an, in an hour. And court cases take months and months to get from start to finish usually. So it's very unrealistic. But I understand you have to have a beginning and an end to a story in an hour. So, I mean, they're good entertainment, but that's how you need to view them. Yeah. 
has your career been, um, I mean, it, I would imagine that it's been uh, some high stress, um, but I guess only you can answer that. How, how would you say it's been? Well, I've very much enjoyed uh, my career in the legal profession from really from start to finish. There hasn't been a single job that I've done along the way that I haven't enjoyed and uh, found um, challenging and fulfilling in many ways. Um, if when you're going to be a judge, it, it, I think for most judges, they are prepared or anticipate that it's going to be a stressful situation. And so that's something, you know, it's, it's not news to us that we might have stress and we have to find uh, productive ways to handle that stress. Some, some of them are just that we can't solve um, everyone's problems. You know, people come to us and we are trying our best to help them with the situation, but we are, we are often bound by our own rules and the law and protocols. And so we can't fix it for people. They have to sort of fix it for themselves with us as the referee in the game. Mm. So that's sometimes frustrating. Um, and sometimes also I think it's frustrating that, uh, maybe frustrating isn't the right word. You're, you were talking about being stressful. From time to time, it can be stressful to live in the public eye. And so, I mean, in general, like I said, we're prepared for that and we understand that, that we are in the public eye. But um, sometimes folks come up to you and, and make comments to you that um, may or may not be accurate and you can't really comment on it because, you know, you're out of the courtroom and things like that. So sometimes that can be stressful to be in the public eye. But but mostly it's it's very satisfying and you get up and you are challenged mentally every day and you never quit learning. It's that part of it is so much fun. And we do get to interact with a lot of very good people, particularly at the Supreme Court. Um, when we weren't under the cir circumstances we have now with COVID-19, typically in the springtime, we have classrooms our bus is full of classes coming to watch our court and, and to ask us questions. And we work very hard to make ourselves available to visit with the students and, and anyone from the public really who wants us to go in and talk to them about the court system. So that's one of the really fun things that we get to do. And our court also takes uh, oral arguments to classes. It, usually twice in the fall and twice in the spring, we hear actual real oral arguments out in a public school or uh, at the University of North Dakota School of Law. In the fall, we do that as well. And so we really um, enjoy, all of us enjoy that opportunity to interact with the students and with the members of the public. So they can see what an actual argument really looks like. That's fantastic. What a great experience for them to have that. And for us too, to have their perspective because they ask us questions and, and frankly, we learn things from them as well. So it's great. Yeah. Well, and really uh, still rather um, notable, I think, that you're the, the fourth woman on the, on the Supreme Court here. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. You know, it, I, I know that I'm an old gray hair now, but when I was in high school, I graduated from high school in 1980, so it's not a million years ago. There had never been a woman on either the United States Supreme Court or our state Supreme Court. So Beryl Levine was the first justice on our Supreme Court. And uh, after that, um, Mary Mullen Maring uh, was appointed when Justice Levine retired. And then uh, Justice Carol Browning Kapsner was appointed. And, and so when Justice Maring retired, I, I filled her spot. And so now I am the only woman on the court, but I, uh, there have been some. And so I'm always hopeful that more women and, and young girls as they're growing up will aspire to serve in our court system, either as a trial judge or on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. What kind of encouragement can you give an attorney, somebody who's in law school, or you know, is somebody like who, who was in your position and maybe needed that encouragement? Well, what I would encourage them is to think of something about themselves that that they can make a difference. You know, there it matters that we have uh, different perspectives on the bench. And whether it's male or female or people of, of different 
ethnic or racial backgrounds, it's important to have a, a cross section of people who serve because we are serving the public and we, the face of the court should reflect the face of our society. And so um, when someone comes to court, they feel that, that they are being treated equally because they're seeing perhaps themselves and the person who's on the other side of the bench. And I, I, I also think that sometimes women, um, and maybe men too, don't always think of themselves as being um, a judge and they don't think of themselves in that way. And the truth is, it's not that much different than being a lawyer, except that you are um, now deciding the case instead of advocating on a case. You know, lawyers who come to court, many of them would have the skills to make a, a good judge and, and they maybe just don't think of themselves in that role. So um, the nice thing about it is we have a op great opportunity to serve the public and um, like I say, it's challenging work and it's good work. I, I've never once got up in the morning in the last 10 years and didn't want to go to work and didn't want to learn something new that I had to do. Uh, there are obviously some things that are more fun to do than others, but um, if, if you don't like doing what you're doing, try something new and maybe, that, maybe being a judge might be the thing for them to do. Sure. Well, it turns out that you are a teacher in, in many aspects when you think about, you know, spending time with kids and um, encouraging somebody that could be a judge someday. Yeah, I, I think of that from time to time. Like I said, I, I thought I'd be a teacher and maybe in a small way I am. In fact, um, folks like you ask us to do these types of things, whether it's speaking to a classroom. Just last Saturday, um, I was asked to help um, a master's level class for the University of Jamestown. Uh, they teach a class and there was a segment on justice and forgiveness. And so I spent last Saturday morning with a master's level class teaching on a weekend. So I have had a few opportunities from being a judge that I wouldn't have had if I um, had, had just stayed in the legal profession as a lawyer. One thing I forgot to share at the beginning is the inspired woman words of wisdom. And it's your only obligation in any lifetime is to be true to yourself. It happens to be from a man, Richard Bach, but uh, to be true to yourself, and you've uh, certainly done that, and you're making a, a huge impact in the lives of a lot of people. Well, thank you. Uh, it's, it's been a pleasure for me, and I appreciate that, that you've even reached out and want to tell a little bit of my story. That's very kind of you, and I appreciate it. Is there anything else that we can learn about you? Anything else you want to share? Um, I have a saying in my, that I have hanging on the wall and uh, it's, it's for little girls out there and it's a quote by um, Calamity Jane and she says, if you want to be a legend, just go out and be one. Perfect. That's great. I love it. Yep. The future is in our hands, right? That's right. <laughs> Oh, I appreciate you so much. Um, I'm sure there's tons of other things that we could talk about and really dig into. Uh, but I just, I'm happy that we had a chance to, to visit and learn a little bit about you and um, kind of know your heart even and your background. So hope you're Thanks, staying well. Margaret. We're just doing fine here. Just fine. Thank you. All right. Keep up with all the Inspired Woman conversations at inspiredwomanonline.com. Subscribe to the Inspired Woman YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook at Inspired Woman and on Instagram and Instagram TV at Inspired Woman by Marcy. We'll see you next time for another Inspired Woman conversation.